Hello and welcome back to The Metamystic Show. Today I'm talking to empaths and we're talking about boundaries. Disclaimer, today we're going to be talking about some sensitive themes. We're going to be talking about boundaries. We're going to be talking about sending boundaries to people that are abusive. If you need help, please seek a professional. I'm just a friend and I have my own opinions. I'm saying all these things today from my own experience and my own vantage point. You have the right to disagree with me, but I'd love to hear your stories down in the comments on how you've set boundaries or what you're working on currently. I love you guys so much. And this episode from the bottom of my heart, I hope it helps in some way. I feel like one of the biggest issues that we have as empaths is learning how to say no. No is a complete sentence and we don't have to be assholes about it. We don't have to be like rude about it. And and we also don't need to go too far the other direction where we don't let anybody in and we close off from the world entirely. I've been on both extremes of this. I've had no boundaries and I've had too many boundaries. So I want to talk about those extremes today. And we're going to start off talking with the Seven of Wands because the Seven of Wands is a card of boundaries. It's a card of protection. He's standing at the top of a hill here protecting his position. He's holding a position. And this is the thing that is the hardest part about setting boundaries is that usually when we have to set boundaries, that means that there's a need for them, right? And if you're dealing with people that consistently are trying to overpower your boundaries and push beyond them and try you on them, you are going to have to take a seven of wands stance against those people because, well, it's necessary You have to continue to hold these boundaries. If you tell somebody one time, if you tell somebody two times, if you tell somebody three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, and they continue to press beyond that, and sometimes purposely to trigger you, to make you look like the crazy one, and I'm not going to get into that today. I'm not going to talk too deeply into narcissistic abuse today because not everybody here has dealt with narcissistic abuse, but a lot of empaths have because empaths are the extreme opposite of a narcissist. It's the inverse of a narcissist. And I also want to just say, disclaimer, this is kind of a controversial opinion that I hold, but it's after being a minister for many, many years where I used to spend literally my entire day responding to people's emails, email after email after email, like, and then years in personal ministry when I worked with my parents and people would come over our house and they would stay for hours and hours and we would be like exhausted right? This is part of the issue is that my parents didn't have boundaries. I actually was not allowed to have boundaries as a kid. So of course that translates into your adult relationships, in your romantic relationships, in your friendship connections, in the jobs that you keep that you should have left two and a half years ago, but you continue to stay at because you Don't even see that there's anything wrong with somebody pushing past your boundaries, pushing past your boundaries. I was a CNA for five years. There, there's nothing like it. I'll tell you that. And there were a lot of amazing things that came from me being a CNA. I loved all my clients, but they will push you beyond any boundary that you have. If you're a CNA, let me know if you're a CNA down in the comments. Love you guys. <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart, right? So let's start here. What even are boundaries, right? I, I'm not going to just assume that people even know what boundaries are. We talk all about this all the time. Set have healthy boundaries, set healthy boundaries, set healthy boundaries. But what if you, like me, grew up? not even having a concept of what the hell a boundary even is or that you're even allowed to have one. The first step of a boundary is having an understanding that you even have autonomy, that you even have the right to set one, to set a boundary to begin with. 
right? And this doesn't have to be like you came from some crazy, horrendous, abusive situation. And for some of us, that's the case, unfortunately. But even if it's more benign, like it's an example of this used to happen to me all the time when I was younger, especially not anymore because I have strong boundaries. I've had to have them, right? If you're an empath, you're the type of person that people open up to. You're the type of person that people feel safe around and they feel comforted by your presence. They actually feel healed by you. Your energy, your essence literally heals and comforts people. Your energy can literally send the demons away. So people will, whether they admit this or not, they might not even consciously understand why they feel better when they're around you, but they may become addicted to your energy. And they may take advantage of that energy, even if they're good people. It doesn't have to be like these are all terrible, abusive people. These could just be people that they talk to you on the phone for three and a half hours and you've said multiple times, hey, Sharon, I got to go, honey. Um, I'm running late to my appointment. Well, can I just stay, stay with you on the phone while you're driving there? And then you're like, all right, I have to go through the Starbucks line, though. Okay, that's fine. I'll wait. I'll stay on the phone with you. You've already let down your boundary, and you're like, all right. Sharon's talking. Sharon's talking. Sharon, You love Sharon. But Sharon's talking about her, you know, divorce that she's going through or, you know, whatever it is. It, d- it doesn't matter what it is. It could be any age. For me, this was when I was younger, especially people would always want to go on like FaceTime with me They specifically like they wanted to see me. They didn't want to just hear my voice. They wanted to see me. And they wanted to take hours and hours and hours of of my time. I'm talking every single day. I'm not talking like once a week, once a month. (laughs) These were people I cared about, friends, family members, right? And when I allowed for it, when I was a Christian minister, people I didn't even know, right? For free. And, And you think to yourself, I'm talking to empaths, I'm talking to light workers, I'm not talking to, okay, you know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to people who, out of the goodness of their heart, you understand the universe. You understand that when you give out of the goodness of your heart, you're connected to source and source is flowing through you as you are helping people, as you're counseling people, right? But this is, this is the funny part of the universe and this is the other side of God. There's not just one face where you just give and give and give and love and give and give. There's another side that comes in, which we see in these goddesses, for example, that come in with like tsunamis and and waves and natural disasters. And that's in the dark goddesses, Hecate, Lilith. They teach us how to have these boundaries, There's not just you give forever and you're just this well that never runs dry and everybody just comes and takes from you and that's your duty in life to just be this martyr that just everybody just comes and just (laughs) slurps up from you for the rest of their goddamn life. No, that's that's actually an unhealthy empath. This is my controversial opinion. It is the polar opposite of a narcissist and it's just as toxic as a narcissist gonna let that sit for a second we need to be healed just as much as they do now what even are boundaries look it's 11 11 what even are boundaries let's take a look let's look, take a look at the types of boundaries and I'm gonna put this up up here so that you can see it but I'm gonna quickly run through what are boundaries what types of boundaries are there like I said I'm not trying to insult your intelligence I'm saying I'll speak for myself. I literally didn't even, I thought that I, especially when I was a Christian minister, the Beatitudes taught us when somebody comes and slaps you on the cheek, you turn the other one for them to slap that side. When somebody asks to walk with you one mile, you go with them too, right? The words of Jesus Christ taught me that. All right, so it gets complicated. 
I know I have some people watching that came from the church, so you understand what I'm saying here. You almost look at it as this form of like this as you as your boundaries are being taken advantage of, as people are literally using you, a scripture is coming to my mind, use you and abuse you. Like it, there are these words that we were taught, all these sermons that we listen to, even if you're not religious, you understand what it's like to be a spiritual martyr. We have this in the new age world where we feel like as these empaths and we're getting better with it now because psychology, you know, the teachings of psychology and narcissistic abuse and all these buzzwords about, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's become more popularized. Good. Because these things, especially for people who have caring hearts like you do, like I do, and truly want the best for people, for society, we forget ourselves, though. And like I said about the two faces of God, and there's more than two, there's like a billion, but I'm just saying the extremes, give it all and then pull it all back. They're both equally valid. It's the yin and the yang. We got to have both right? We don't want to give it all. And we also don't want to block it all out either. Cause then you're going to block out love. If you block it all out, if you block everybody out, if your boundaries are too tough, then you're not going to have anybody. You're not going to have anything. You're not even going to have a pet. Cats, no dog, like, well, more cats. They don't even want to come near you. You know, you've, you've got to have an open heart even for animals. So anyways, all right, let's look at the boundaries. These are the types of boundaries. Let's start with this one. Physical boundaries. Here's an example. I need this room for work. It's like, I, I need this room. Physical boundaries. Sexual boundaries. I'm not comfortable doing this yet. Having an open and honest conversation with your partner, or people you're dating, or what have you. And I'm not really too comfortable with that. Uh, I don't really want you to choke me. I, I'm not really into that because somebody choked me when I was younger and I almost passed out. It doesn't really turn me on, okay? <clears throat> Just an example. Expectations. I don't think I can do this for you. People have very high expectations of empaths because they're used to us giving and then when we say, hey, can't really do that today, then they'll get pissed at you, right? That's how we know we need boundaries. Number four, Financial boundaries. I don't want to spend money on that. Oh, well, you always pay for my food every time we go out. I don't have the money. Financial boundaries. Time boundaries. I already have plans for today. How about we do it next week? If people are used to you every, every day, your friend calls you. Hey, normally you even stay with me on the phone when you're going through Starbucks. Can't can't today. Well, you've never done this before and I, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. Let him go. Emotional boundaries. Uh, I'm not in the headspace. Can we talk later? People that trauma dump, trauma dump, trauma dump. When you have a moment where you need a friend, they're just MIA. They're gone. They're bored. They don't want to listen to you. They, they bring it back to themselves again and again and again. Emotional boundaries. Intellectual boundaries. Difference of opinions is okay. People have different political opinions, religious opinions, opinions on money, opinions on what you should wear, opinions on what you should eat. Should you be a vegan? Should you, should you eat meat? Whatever. It doesn't matter. We could sit in a room with 10 people with varying opinions and... I do believe it is possible that everybody can respect each other's opinions in a perfect world, of course. Intellectual boundaries. Verbal boundaries. Don't insult me. Don't insult me. Somebody calls you a bitch. Let everybody calm down. I was just reading this. The advice was if somebody uses a slur against you, the other day, the Pope said some sort of gay slur. Anyways, I'm not going to get into that. But I'm saying like in a personal context, like, if so, like this happened to me the other, other day. Somebody called me a bitch. It's like, let everybody calm down. Then come back and say, hey, 
I'm not cool with that. Verbal boundaries, right? So those are those are the main boundaries that we need to implement. And this is the thing. If we if you like me were raised with there are no boundaries. In fact, you are not allowed to have them. This feels like a different this feels like a different reality. This feels rude. This feels uncomfortable. This feels awkward. This feels like I'm going to lose all my family and friends. You might. You might. Cuz that's what happened to me. For the most part, you know, I have I have I have a few still standing. Bust god, but you know, and and they would say to me, the people that I have boundaries with, they would say, well, you're the one who's not talking to me. I didn't go anywhere. I've been trying to call you, text you, email you, comment on all of your social media. Exactly. I have boundaries against you for a reason. Because you violated every single one of these for the most part. And that's why today I'm talking about having to set... What did I, what's my title? How to set firm boundaries when they're constantly being threatened. Because there is an element of threat in this. And that's why we need to have this seven of wands. My voice is cracking and everything. Because it, it, it's, this stuff's so freaking hard. <laughs> now I'm like tearing up. It's so hard. It's, I, there's nothing that's been harder for me than this. And I've been working on this since I would say about 2018 when I moved into Poppy's house. Yeah. When I lived on my own. Yeah. So it's, it's been a few years and I've been constantly working on this every single day. Why are boundaries so hard to set? You know, we've talked about it. We've talked about why. But I want to talk a little bit deeper Even if we are aware of, you know, what boundaries are and even what our own boundaries are, I would actually recommend sitting down, meditating, thinking about what your boundaries are. Things are going to start popping up like I was I was joking about Sharon. It's like if you want to have some time to yourself on your drive to work and not have to talk on the phone while you're going through Starbucks line. That might be a boundary you have to set. Well, I'm going to lose my friend. That's, it's an imbalance. It's a complete imbalance, that relationship, right? We got to look at this stuff. We've got to be honest. If we want a better life, if we want a balanced life, we have to look at both sides of the equation. It's not always the other person's fault. It's also our fault for not setting the boundary, And if they get angry at you, that's okay. This is a journey and it takes a long time to implement this stuff. No judgment. I'm still working on it as we speak today. I want to tell you something personal to me um, about something that has taken me way longer than 2018, way before that. Going back to my earliest memories on why I didn't have any boundaries. And I feel like you'll relate to this, even if you're a man, with what I'm about to say. Male, female, non-binary, however you identify. This is an energy. It's a people-pleasing energy that a lot of us empaths with beautiful hearts that love people, love the world, love animals, doing a lot of great things, fall into. Okay, so I grew up, as many of you know, in the Christian religion. Both of my parents were radical from the start. I was raised in it. You know, we didn't, we didn't trick or treat. Um, I was told that Santa was fake when I was like three. You know, it's not about Santa, it's about Jesus. And you know, that's just, that's just a dumb example. I'm just saying, it's like, it's much darker than that. I'm just saying, because some Christians still celebrate Halloween and stuff. I, I never did. I wasn't allowed to. So that's the type of Christianity I was raised in. It was um, conservative, yes, but, you know, I'm not going to go fully into that today. But cult-like. Look up Kenneth Copeland. That'll give you a little flavor. Um, prosperity gospel. Um, anyways, they say that we stole their stuff 
but they actually stole it from us, all right? They, they talk a lot about positive thinking and affirmations and really the law of attraction is what they teach, which is what's so ironic about it. But anyways, I'll talk about that another day because there's a lot I could say about the prosperity gospel, Joel Osteen, all those, right? Some of you would know about that. But let me start here. Um, their boundaries were not allowed, especially as a woman in my family, right? I was groomed to become this hyper-feminine, toxically feminine version of myself where I was essentially um, a second mom to the home, um, came from a big family, I didn't have a childhood. From the very start, I took care of my other siblings. You know, I helped my mom with the home. Um, And you know what? I loved having a big family. And I miss my brother Mitch every single day. He died of an overdose in April of 2023. Um, And I loved having a big family. But they felt like my kids, not my siblings. Um, you, You can see examples of this more from the evangelicals, like shiny, happy people, if you've ever heard of that show. You know, of course, that's a little bit gimmicky, but is it really, though? If you actually look behind the scenes of that Duggar family? Yeah, anyways. Um, so I love family. I, I, I'm I, not saying I'm, like, anti-family or anything like that. I'm just saying the way I was raised from the start, I had to basically be a servant. And I looked at it as an honor. I was like, I'm helping with everything. I'm doing everything. I'm basically a second mom at, like, seven years old in this family. It's my pride and joy. It's my purpose for living. Um... And so from a very young age, I learned to be, to overgive. I never relaxed. I would always be on edge. I, as I got older, I would actually, like the second I heard my dad walking, I would go and like hide in my room because I knew that every single time he passed by me, he would ask me to do something. So I started to learn to like try to stay out of the line of vision so that I could have like a few minutes to myself. And I love my dad. I love my mom. I love my family. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I, I was going a certain direction on this show where I was like very angry and and bitter actually over the past few years since I went no contact with my family. It's been about three years now since I've gone no contact. And, um, so I went through, a dark night of the soul where I could have gone one of two directions dude I could have gone bitter forever and I'm just going to be honest with you because some of the stuff that I uncovered in my own psychology with the enmeshment and the just I was suicidal for many years trigger warning gotta get that clown nose out all right here's the clown nose Bring in the guides. <laughs> All right. Um, I never felt safe. I lived in a constant state of fight or flight. I self-harmed myself for 17 years. I, I relapsed. I went back to it. I relapsed. I went back to it, right? Um. And self-harm was just the physical aspect of how I felt inside. I hated myself. I hated myself. Why did I hate myself so much if I was making so many other people happy all the time? Right? It's a question to ask yourself. If you're an empath and you're overgiving, 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 why the hell are you so depressed? Because it's an imbalance. It's an imbalance. It's just, again, I'm going to say it and I know, I know. I believe for myself, I'll say it for myself, I believe for myself that it's equally as toxic to be an overgiving, people-pleasing empath to the point of your detriment to where you literally want to end your life than it is to be a narcissist. I'll I'll speak for myself, right? Because I'm not victim shaming, I'm not victim blaming. I'm you. I'm saying, are we going to rise above these assholes or not? 
Are we going to take our power back or not? Or are we going to stay in victim mode for the rest of our lives? Not saying we shouldn't go to therapy, counseling, Reiki sessions, ev- the whole gamut. I'm s- I love it all. I love every single aspect. Whatever works for you, do that and do it times 10. IFS parts work, do it. Retreat to Bali, do it. Ayahuasca, do it. Smoking weed every day, do it. Right? Do do you. Do what heals you. Right? I was in this mode, what I will call a form of hyper-femininity. It's a toxic femininity to where you are submissive to the point of you are essentially the slave of the narcissist. And in this case, it was a family unit. And again, I love my dad. He's not a bad person, okay? I have, I have a complex view of what narcissists even are, and you know what? They're actually pretty rare. Um, they are, there's something off. So anyways, I love you, dad, if you're listening to this. And, you know. You were raised by a narcissist, dad. So it's just, it's generational. And that's why this, again, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is the controversial opinion I hold. I was raised, they were raised by one. I was raised by one. Who am I? Well, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. Did, did I ever exhibit narcissistic traits? Yes. Hi, my name is Missy Gordon. I exhibited narcissistic traits. Oh, well, that wasn't me. I'm just a victim and that wasn't me and that's not my story and I'm just going to stay a victim for the rest of my life and I'm not narcissistic. I'm not narcissistic. But all I do is talk to everybody about how I went through narcissistic abuse. Sounds a little narcissistic to me. Yeah, but I'm saying it from the victim side. I'm you. I'm trying to help you. All right. Okay. I I should be dead. So I'm speaking from that level of intensity. I'm not talking about this fluffy pop psychology bullshit that is just going to pacify you and jerk you off for the rest of your goddamn life and you're just going to stay addicted to to being a narcissist essentially. It's just the opposite. It's Anyways, it's my opinion. I feel like gotta, I gotta put these on. I feel real exposed. <laughs> I just saw a lady get like blasted to hell on Mark Manson's podcast for saying something similar to what I just said. So, and you know what? I understand both sides. I understand you literally listening to this and being like, you are victim shaming, you are victim blaming. But if you could know and understand why I'm saying it, it's the intention of why, right? This is like 15 years into my healing and I'm looking back on the version of me that actually secretly in the shadow wanted to hold on to that because I was so abused I was so abused. And the depth, the depth in the darkness, in the self-hatred, in the addictions, in the sexual shame, in the it just makes you never want to let go of being a victim. Because you feel like if you let go of that, that it's going to be just like, oh, just like it never happened. And they just get off scot-free and you just you just look happy. And everyone's like, well, I guess she wasn't really affected by it. I wake up every single day and fight these demons. I was getting ready in my bathroom fighting these demons before I filmed this today. Look at what I asked my cards to this episode. This is what I asked my cards. Evil Eye. This is what I asked my cards right before I filmed this episode. Wow, Empress at the bottom of the deck. See, do you want to be an Empress or do you want to be a victim? That's my question. And this is for high-level light workers. 
I asked my cards, what are the consequences of me filming this episode? This is a daily battle for me, right? And I'm trying to tread lightly, and I'm trying to say what I need to say because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a therapist. And I suggest that you get the help you need. I've tried many therapists, I've tried spiritual advisors, I've tried conferences and 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 courses and 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 all sorts of spiritual practices i've tried it all bro and you know what i've come to it all works and every single thing i tried was another stepping stone to me sitting here today the me that didn't end my life and maybe that's triggering it's meant to be it's meant to be I just got a comment that popped up my, up on my phone and it says, yes, this resonates. So this is resonating for somebody. And if I'm, if I'm triggering you, I, I, I truly am sorry. I'm not kidding. We're all in different parts of our journey. Now let me get back to the personal story. Um, I became this like hyper feminine, people pleasing, literally, hi, hello, I'm Missy, I'm at your service, what can I get for you, what can I do for you, walk on me, spit on me, stand on my face, energetically, of course, you know what I mean, I mean, it did translate to other areas, this has been literally a lifelong journey for me. And so there is no easy answer. How do you set boundaries? You just keep you keep setting them and you keep trying different things and you keep healing yourself. Oh, that didn't work. You try this instead. You read this book. You go to that thing. You try that therapist. You try a man instead of a woman. You try this. You try that. You do this. You do that. Like I even, I dated women because I couldn't stand men. <laughs> Because of what was, not just from my father, from the church. I wasn't allowed to speak as a woman and I've always been a leader. I've always been a speaker. I've always been, I've always had something to say, something to demonstrate. But where I came from, it wasn't necessarily not allowed like it is in the Baptist church, where you're actually not allowed to speak as a woman unless you only speak to other women. But where I came from, it was a little more loose. But even so, it's like, yeah, but that's the pastor's wife. Sort of a vibe, right? We want to hear the pastor. We'll, we'll let the pastor's wife do the little women's retreat over there, right? And so it gave me this complex of, I wish I was a man, and I'm not trans. Um, but it, it did something really funny to me with my gender, through the years where I really struggled with my gender. I, I struggled with how to present myself. I didn't want to come off too feminine. I didn't want to come off as weak. I wanted to make sure people took me seriously and took my authoritative, took my words as authority and listened to what I was saying, right? And overcompensating, right? And then that went also into my sexuality. I'm not saying I have dated women because of this, I'm saying I tended to slide more over to women as I got older because I thought, I thought, I thought they wouldn't exhibit this toxic masculinity upon me. Uh -uh, wrong. It's not gender. It's energy. You could be a woman and exhibit toxic masculine traits. And I dated multiple women who did who treated me exactly the same as I was treated by men. Doesn't matter. You can't run from this. It's something that needs to be healed and revealed, or revealed to be healed, I should say. It needs to be revealed so it can be healed. And how do we do that? By setting boundaries and figuring out what our boundaries even are. Well, people just use me and take advantage of me and... and it needs to start with us. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to me. I know this is tough love, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be triggering. I'm saying, I'm saying this in a place of you can be powerful. You can stand in your own autonomy. 
you can live a powerful, influential life without being stepped on, without being this victim empath that just gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and gives and and nobody gives back and you wonder why. And you also wonder why, wait, why am I like not getting paid as well? And people just use my services and spend two and a half hours with me on the phone and and they they don't even pay me anything. And then I ask for people to pay me for one course and they don't buy it and then they actually get pissed at me and unsubscribe. I'm just making this up. It's because it's it's six of pentacles. It's equal energy exchange. We set the bar. And we got to be firm. The energy that I'm in, I wouldn't just be like this if I was having coffee with you. Like, I'm I'm actually really a chill person. (laughs) Believe it or not. I know. I'm kind of quiet. I kind of just like sit in my meditation. You know, out there right now, I have like this stream with birds. I hear it. (laughs) I'm a very peaceful, quiet person, actually. This energy that I'm speaking to you in this episode today, it's not at you. It's for you. So I hope that comes through. It's Seven of Wands energy. It's like a protective energy. I, and, and this is the thing. I can't protect you. Nobody can protect you. You have to protect yourself. And that's what's hard about this. This is what's hardest about setting boundaries is that when we have been victims, we kind of don't even have the strength a lot of the time to do all this and to hold this position. Like he is holding this position with all his might. This is taking everything in him. Look at all these people down here trying to bat him off of his his stance. You know, there could be, you you might set a boundary and you might feel like a wave come at you where it's like, it's resisted, it's resisted. And you might even feel threatened. Like that's the more extreme. If if you're leaving abusive situations, you will feel a sense of threat for, for setting a boundary. And so I'm talking to extreme cases today, but this could be taken for, for any side of the spectrum that you are on. Even if it's like, your boss always asks you to come in on Saturday and it's literally in your contract that you can't work Saturdays because you like take care of your son. It's like, it's literally in the contract and they consistently ask you to work on Saturday. It's, it could even just be something like that. It's like, we've got to be firm. Right? And, and this energy that I'm in, it's an inside thing. I'm just speaking it out loud so you can hear me talk. But this is how I feel inside. And I could just be smiling like, hey, how are you today? But inside, it's seven of wands. You know what I'm saying? And, but but we, let, we put down the wand when we are you know, with people that we love and we trust and everything, right? We don't want to become, like, warlike all the time. But for somebody like me, I'll speak for myself, I lived in a constant state of fight or flight for my entire life. That's why I have CPTSD. It's complex PTSD, which is, like, long-term PTSD. It's hard for me to ever, like, relax. That's why I spend every single day, like taking time every single day to meditate, to calm my nervous system down. I do things to try to help myself relax that are not drugs and alcohol or sex or addictions or any of that, you know, because I've gone all those sorts of directions to try to self-soothe, right? So how do we set boundaries? We just set them and we keep setting them. And if people continue to cross you, continue to challenge you, continue to threaten you in some cases, you need to get away from those people. And if you need help, bring in a third party, right? So let's close on this. I have this. I'll put it up here. This is called Healthy Boundaries. These are like positive mindset shifts that we can implement into our psyche. It's not my job to fix others. It is okay if others get angry. It is okay to say no. It is not my job to 
take responsibility for others. Yeah, but you always this and you always that and yeah, I need you and I'm I'm struggling and I'm drowning and I need money and I need seven of wands. It's not my job to take responsibility for others. I take responsibility for myself. I don't have to anticipate the needs of others. Not saying we can't be caring, thoughtful. Like I'm the type of person that literally will observe somebody and I'll figure out the little things they like. I'll figure out what sort of coffee they like to drink. I'll figure out what sorts of clothes they wear, what their jewelry looks like, what music they like. And then for their birthday, I'll make them some sort of customized special gift. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that we can't love people, the right people. We only give this beautiful energy as empaths to the right people, the people who deserve it, the people who reciprocate energy. Not saying you should turn off your, your beautiful, loving heart, the things that make you beautiful to this planet and heal this planet. But it's just, it's a balance here. We're, we're just bringing balance into really a toxic empath pandemic you know epidemic whatever especially in our spiritual communities i don't have to anticipate the needs of others it is my job to make me happy nobody has to agree with me i have a right to my own feelings i am enough and finally i just want to read through this just to get the wheels turning in this direction of like, how do we set boundaries? Where do we even begin? What are some thoughts to get this rolling for me in my life? Like, how do I set these boundaries? Here are some thoughts. It is not my job to heal others, please others at my expense. Make it work if the effort isn't mutual. Continuously compromise. I've done all of these. For years, so no judgment. It's not my job to tiptoe around you, anticipate your needs, change myself to your liking. But it is my job to heal myself, listen to my needs and my desires, respect myself and my time. Be true to my authentic self. Set healthy boundaries that protect my energy. Leave when I'm not being valued. Say no when it's not in alignment and be mindful with my yes. I love you guys so much. It's been Missy Gordon, the Metamystic here. Oh, I wrote a song, by the way. Damn, I forgot to mention it mid-episode. Well, the real, the the, the real MVPs will will still be listening this far. So let let me know if you've made it this far into the episode. I love you guys so much. But I wrote this song, inspired by the Seven of Wands, called "Other Side," and some of the lyrics are "the other side of the hill." The song is about somebody looking to the other side the grass is greener on the other side and this could be romantic friends family where somebody always makes you feel you know like you're a second option or a seventh option right and this song is about that and it's about while they were on the other side where they thought the grass was greener I was also on the other side moving on to my own self-worth And that's what the song is about. It's called Other Side. Here it is. You look so pretty with a furrowed brow. I can't tell you why, but I can tell you how you've been. By where you've been. The sun's beating hot up against my face. Hey, it's a welcome change from the full moon's cold embrace your secret safe with her on the other side on the other side on the other side of the hill
hill on the other side on the other side on the other side of the hill I feel seven faces I feel 14 hands now I know why you canceled our important plans guess I'll hold my own hand now that I've got no tears left to cry you have the audacity to ask me why you came that's not the same thing on the other side on the other side on the other side of the hill on the other side on the other side on the other side of the grass is not always greener and the water's not always sweeter and the wound will sure as hell get deeper the longer you lay beneath her but my it sure as hell looks cleaner No more skeletons or misdemeanors And my burden suddenly feel way easier Cause those fourteen hands are in the ether now shadows looked like the whole time and I don't even feel like I wasted a dime cause you saved me ten years of a therapist time while you were on the other side side on the other side of the hill on the other side on the other side on the other side of the guys you can always listen to this podcast as well on spotify and apple podcasts and if you want to listen to only my music you can subscribe to Honey Bee music b is spelled b33 on youtube i love you guys and i'll see you on the next one uh-
on the other side on the other side on the other side of the hill